Today's show is sponsored by ExpressVPN. Change the location of your IP address and bypass region locks at expressvpn.com slash inside. Hey everybody and welcome back to Inside Gaming Daily for Wednesday. Let's hunt for the demise of loot boxes Ooh. as more Ooh. and more oh. developers are flushing oh. them down the toilet oh. before the law oh. catches up with them. This oh. is forced morality at its finest. Uh. Big news in the loot box world recently. Another game has decided to get rid of them and in this case, it's actually a pretty big game, Destiny 2. Uh. <laughs> Finally, the good guys won, right, Brian? It's all over, boys. Pack it up. Let's go home. Jesus I, Christ, Connor, why do you have so many suitcases? Is that one I, just for your hair products? Come on. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Brian, he's fainting. Brian, call 911. Call Chuck E. Cheese's. He needs a ball pit. Stat. <laughs> so, yeah, a week ago, the folks at Bungie announced that they'd be getting rid of the option to pay for Bright Engrams, which are Destiny 2's version of cosmetic loot boxes. They'll still be in the game, but you just won't be able to buy them. Wait, what, what am I going to do with all this money? What am I to do with his money. Okay, give me an Engram. This isn't an Engram. I can't wear this! Keep it out front. Give me my cash. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 ah! In a blog post, the game's director, Luke Smith, made the announcement and he explained the rationale behind it. He wrote that, for season 10, we're doing away with bright Engrams as purchasable items. We want players to know what something costs before they buy it. Mm. Oh, cool. He added, bright Engrams don't live up to that principle, so we will no longer be selling them on the Eververse store, though they will still appear on the free track of the season pass. And that was pretty much it. Honestly, the announcement was kind of buried amid all the other announcements about the next season of Destiny 2. That blog post was really, really long and uh, verbose. I felt verbose. Like, verbose. I felt like I was reading a weird novel that my friend who thinks he's smart loaned me. He's like, there's some interesting concepts I think you'd really like to dig yeah, into. I want to talk about that. And it's like that. Ready Player One or something. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like we said, this announcement has been floating around for a while. It right. took about a week for the game's media, including us, uh -oh. to notice, whoopsie. But it is an important announcement because Destiny 2 is still a hugely popular game and it's the latest in a line of games to walk away from the much hated but extremely profitable practice. Yeah, Turns out bad things can still make you money. Weird. <laughs> so why are they doing this now, Brian? Well, there's a couple things here. We could sit and hail Bungie's morality like they seem to want us to do with this post, but this actually seems to be pissing off a fair amount of people too. We'll get to that later. We have a couple of theories first. Number one, this decision could be because Bungie is now completely in control of the game and they don't have to deal with Mean Daddy Activision anymore. Bobby Kotick can't hurt you anymore, Bungie. That specter still looms large in the old Bungie office, I guess. I heard he's been cloned on Exegol. <laughs> which apparently the Emperor was a clone. Just let the movie be bad and move on. Well, no, now that it's I know fine. that, the movie's good now, actually. Oh, things had gotten tense behind the scenes with Bungie and the publisher who increasingly wanted more money out of Destiny 2. That doesn't sound like Activision. No, Daddy what? Bobby would never. Destiny 2 did have a lot of issues when it launched in 2017, primarily a lack of content. It was the same problem that players had with the first Destiny, great underlying gameplay in a cool sci-fi universe, but there wasn't a lot to do. Bungie didn't seem to have learned their lesson with the first first launch, which was fairly disappointing and turned a lot of people off. I think 2's vanilla game was way better than the first one, but I do understand what people are getting at. And lo and behold, just like with the first Destiny, the sequel has gotten a lot better with regular updates over the years, but apparently that wasn't good enough for Destiny 2's publisher, Activision. Whoa. Daddy Acto. Behind the scenes, there's reportedly a lot of friction between Bungie and the publisher, not the good sexy kind either. I remember seeing a porn once called Pulp Friction. I saw a porn once called Edward Penis Hands. F oh. The bad kind of friction, the kind that sucks. It's like when your stepdad grounds you and you punch your wall because you hate him. While Bungie was happy with the direction Destiny 2 was going, Activision wanted it to make more money. <gasps> uh, the codec machine is unfathomably glutinous. Gluttonous. Yeah, there's no <laughs> bounds to his hunger. And then they started experimenting with various discounts and giveaways to try and get those numbers up. Can you tell us more about that, Brian? Yeah, so in 2018, Activision president Cody Johnson seemed to take a shot at Destiny 2, saying that it was underperforming and they were working to, quote, provide new opportunities for monetization. Damn, Cody, what the hell? Way to stab your brother in the heart, dude. <sighs> That obviously didn't sit well with Bungie and they publicly responded. Bungie's Luke Smith shot back saying, Ooh. we are not disappointed with Forsaken. We set out to build a game that Destiny players would love and at Bungie, we love it too. Forsaken Damn. owns. Shots fired. That is an incredible expansion. Yeah, yeah Forsaken is awesome. Uh, is What is it? 
It's a, it's like a video game. Finally, in early 2019, Activision and Bungie announced that they were breaking up and that Bungie was keeping the rights to Destiny 2. Activision got to keep the dog. God, finally, that was starting to feel like having two friends who've been dating for years and obviously hate each other's guts, but they won't do anything about it. So please stop anger whispering at each other when we hang out, it's weird. Well, maybe I didn't want to go on vacation to New Jersey. And I hate your mother. This split was very well received at Bungie. Employees there reportedly cheered and popped champagne when the news was announced. <laughs> Single and ready to mingle, baby. Let's go to brunch, mother Bungie's kind of the Shep Boy RD of video games. Weapon armed. Explain. Yeah, elaborate. Shep Boy RD's nuts in your oh, mouth. God. Oh, God. Ah. Damn it. Oh. Well, yeah. I was so curious, too. Ah. Yeah, it was clear that Bungie still had a lot of faith in Destiny and going forward in an Activision-free future, and they tried to get it in as many hands as possible. After their split, they made the base version of Destiny 2 free to play, and they also put it on Steam. Meanwhile, upcoming expansions were changed to standalones, meaning you don't need to have bought previous expansions to be able to play them. But if you ever want to do something super strange for no good reason, you can play Destiny 2 on Stadia now for the low, low price of $10 a month, plus like $130 to buy the bundle. Yeah. Also, that doesn't include Shadowkeep or the new season. So yeah. you're gonna have to pay more on top of that. It's a real deal. So this change to Bright Engrams feels like another move by Bungie to make Destiny 2 a little less monetized. Well, at least when it comes to loot boxes, they've still got a battle pass and all those expansions, still gotta pay the bills after all. Uh, it also comes at a time when loot boxes are falling under more and more scrutiny. I'm not paying you my bills, which could be a second reason why Bungie's pulling the plug on their version of the monetization practice. Yeah, in December, a UK based charity released a report that said loot boxes are polluting the lives of young people and that the younger the gamer is, the worse the effects are. This is what Socrates warned us about. He was killed for being a... Gamer? Yes. <laughs> One of the first. What's up, philosophizers? This is so great. What is up, ancient Greece? Loot crate. Loot crates. Loot Loot crates. <laughs> we got it, everybody. Yeah. Also, last year, a UK commissioner released another scathing report, too, which said loot boxes can lead to kids spending hundreds of pounds and leaving children feeling like they're gambling. So, yeah, the UK is all over that issue. Not just over there, though. Over the last few years, we've seen a number of governments around the world actually ban loot boxes like Belgium and the Netherlands, or say they're looking into the practice and ultimately probably not doing anything like here in the good old US of A. Loot boxes are hugely profitable though, so publishers don't want to give them up. Activision Blizzard made more than $700 million from microtransactions in just one quarter last year. Oh boy. Yeah, but they don't want them outright banned in more countries either, so we're seeing some take steps to mitigate the damage, especially when it comes to disclosing odds of the contents inside loot boxes. In 2019, all three of the big console companies, as well as a bunch of major publishers, have said that they will force odds disclosures by 2020. That's now. Socrates foretold this. Yes, he did, yep. And they're also trying to come up with creative ways around any possible regulations. Valve added a new item for Counter-Strike players in France called an X-ray scanner, <laughs> and it lets you see what's in inside a loot box before you open it. I don't understand what the point of it is though. Your empty wallet, that's what's inside. Oh! Yeah, I got him. Rocket League is doing something similar nowadays. They have what's called blueprints that give you a preview of whatever you're throwing cash at. They're trying to get rid of the random element, so they think they yeah. can kind of beat the system by like, yeah, you're gonna buy this gun. And we're seeing some other big franchises like Call of Duty and others start to shift to a battle pass system instead of loot boxes. Oh, don't worry though. Sports games like FIFA and NBA 2K are still just as monetized as they ever were because for some Thank reason God. the people who oh. play these games put up with it. What <laughs> is up YouTube? We're back opening uh, FIFA Pro Team oh. new boxes. I'm destitute. I filed oh. for bankruptcy last night. <laughs> oh, me can't believe me opened a silver version of uh, my favorite player, Dave Beckham. Oh my God, I can't believe it. So back to Destin, oh, <coughs> excuse me. Yeah, they're also making other changes with the upcoming season of The Worthy. The popular Trials of Osiris mode, which debuted in the original game, is coming back, mm. mother And the season pass is also getting revamped, so you can now go past level 100 and get new, unique items. Oh. Uh oh. Of course, we should note that purchasable bright and- What are you doing? I'm just vibing. Is there a problem with that? Yeah. Are you gonna read the script? I was just waiting for you to be done vibing. <laughs> 
course, we should note that purchasable Bright Engrams have been in the game for years now, so it's a little funny that all of a sudden now they conflict with Bungie's morality. No, no. And to enter the third theory as to why Bungie's waxing poetic about something kind of scummy, some people were rubbed the wrong way when Bungie initially put Bright Engrams in the game. Which makes sense, sure, the base game is free to play now, but it was not initially. Plus the cost of all the expansions, it's just a lot to ask people to spend more money to get stuff. Bright Engrams are cosmetic only, so it's not like they're locking better gear behind a paywall, but still. As one user, JJ4Press, put it, so they get to make money off of it for three years and also get to be the good guys? LOL. Okay. Bungie's not a non-profit charity. They're in this to make money. But for whatever reason, they decided that they wanted to get rid of this particular microtransaction. Better late than never, right? I suppose. Yeah. Good, okay. <laughs> <laughs> the biggest news this year when it comes to loot boxes came out of the UK. Brian, what you got for us? Yeah, so this was huge. Back in October of 2019, a commissioner in the UK released a very scathing report after they interviewed dozens of children who played all kinds of video games from FIFA to Fortnite. The only two games <laughs> that 